I'm Elizabeth from Elizabeth's Healing Path, and I've got a fun video series for you. It's part one for my clients to understand kind of uh, how I go through my process and some ideas for self-care of the three, some, some different techniques, uh, some neuromuscular techniques, myofascial release, a little bit of cupping, and some lymphatic drainage. So in my practice, it can be challenging because when someone comes onto my table, I have to go through all of these different assessing to figure out what can help my client the best. And the first time I try something, it doesn't always work because everyone's body is different. And recently I had to go through this process with myself and use all these tools I had in my toolbox. And I've got a lot of tools and it still took me a good month to get really on top of my pain. And so I wanted to provide some tools for my clients so they can navigate that as well because it's not just in the room. If you want to come to me weekly or maybe even more than once a week, then it can be easier to really help you with your pain. But if you wanna just come once a month, you, there needs to be some self-care so we can get the best results possible. And of course, it's not always just on the massage table either. For example, I had to get massage, which I got a lot of massage, a lot of myofascial release, among some other things. Uh, I had to get some chiropractic and I got some dry needling and I used a lot of these tools on myself. I was cupping my, myself every day. I was using ice and uh, creams and, and moist heat of the shower. So I created this series so you can kind of understand a little bit more about these different techniques and how to do self-care. It's also for my sports massage students as well. So before we get into the series, this is your little introduction. Uh, I also wanted to talk about the benefits of heat and cold and some creams. Now, a cream that I've really been liking is this Natural Formulations CBD Ice Plus. Now this is a hemp CBD, so there's no THC in it, can't get high off of it. I don't know much about marijuana CBD, other than the fact that it's gonna be a lot more expensive, but this is from Natural Formulations and they do have a version without it as well. You could get just the ice, which has arnica and some turmeric and menthol, which are really great. And I've been finding that this has really been helping me. So, and so I had to bring in the big guns. Normally when I experience pain, I have this essential oil roll-on that I give to my clients. Since we're, that doesn't help, I'm sure too far away. Uh, and so this is a blend of oils. And I have another video on how I make this. And this is just essential oils. And I find that this usually works well for headaches or any other areas, but this one was not strong enough. I had to pull in the menthol and the CBD. So there's lots of different creams out there. Um, to help with it. Now something like uh, a lot of times, like this is a very mild form. This can usually work. I even like smell, I have some rose in it. Even the smell of rose can help diminish pain. Now the menthol, the way a nervous system works is it reports the pain to our brain. Well, there's a lot of studies showing if you give it a different sensation, it can only report one sensation uh, to your brain and so if you put something like menthol on your skin it, it's going to overwhelm that pain sensation and it's going to report that sensation that tingling that iciness it's going to report that back to your brain and and not the pain so they, these can be really helpful uh, as well as reducing inflammation if there's inflammation in the area uh, that's one of the reasons pets tend to lick themselves when they're in pain uh, because it'll then report that pleasure sensation, the licking, instead of the pain sensation to the brain. But sometimes pain is so bad that none of that works. <laughs> the nervous system's like, you can't trick me, there's pain, and you can't trick me with these other sensations. So menthol is a really good way to do that as well. Keep in mind that some of these creams cannot be used on top of open skin. Uh, or with sensitive skin. So some of these are stronger than others, but there's lots and lots on the market. Uh, then we're gonna go into heat. Now, just my biomat is heat, right? So when you're on my table, I automatically have the biomat. It's usually set around 130, but it can go up to 160 and it can go down to 90. And it's an infrared heat, which it's also dry heat because there's moist heat and wet heat. 
Uh, and so it's a dry heat, it's infrared heat, it goes six inches into the body, and it also reduces inflammation, which heat generally does not, but infrared heat does. So there's the biomat, that's a dry heat. Uh, another, I can't, I don't, I, I think this is a dry heat. Uh, these pillows that you put in the microwave, these are really good. These are a nice, I'm pretty sure they're a dry heat as well. Uh, I have hot stones in my room. Hot stones are also a dry heat, which is, it feels really nice though. And so all of these help relax muscular tension. Heat helps relax muscular tension. There's also uh, the hydroculator hot packs that you'll see in a lot of like chiropractors offices. I don't have one anymore because I have the Biomat, uh, but that's a moist heat. Personally for my self care, being in a really hot shower or taking like a hot Epsom salt bath, that's a moist heat, which also works as well. So play around with, does your body prefer a moist heat or a dry heat? Cause they all have their different benefits. Now, besides heat, which people tend to much more enjoy, there's also ice. <laughs> so this is like an ice pack I got from the dollar store, and this was really nice because I could just slip it in places. So this is an ice pack that I was using to help myself get to sleep. I put the ice pack on, on the area that was hurting. I also have cold stones. These are made out of marble, so I use these in sessions. And another thing I really like is this is a thermal ball, but I've not been able to find one for a while. I, these are like when I first became a massage therapist 15 years ago. So I've had this for a while. But this is kind of nice because you can use it the way you use like the tennis balls or the pinky balls, but it's also cold and it's holding cold heat. So really great if you want to, uh, for example, if you have plantar fasciitis and you want to roll back and forth on something that's cold, this also works really well. I really like the consistency of it. But cold is really great for reducing uh, inflammation. So if an area feels hot, and I will say a little bit of inflammation is good. It, the inflammation is there because it's helping us try to heal. But if inflammation sticks around for too long, uh, it can impede the healing process. So, for example, you know, there's a lot of talk on whether or not you should ice a sprained ankle, for example, in the first 48 hours. Because the inflammation is going and icing it may prolong how long it needs to heal. So there's some debate on when you should ice. Just, just to know that that's out there. But after that, you know, it can feel really good if something is hot and there's a lot of inflammation in the area. Like I can just feel a client's body and I can tell if there's inflammation. But I've, uh, my hands have been trained for that. You might not feel it, you may or you may not. So ice reduces inflammation. Even something like the, the these creams can reduce some inflammation, and this releases some uh, muscular tension. So they've all got different things that they do. But these are just some of the tools that I have in my toolbox. Of course, I also have cups uh, in my toolbox. I have a set that I use just for myself on the side of my bed. Um, but yeah, so any questions, feel free to comment. Check out the rest of the series. I hope you like it.